Okay, sister, please come here. Please tell us your testimony. Okay. Now she's happy. Yeah, please. Uh, and, and tell us your name and that you are Irish, not Indian. <laughs> I can catch my breath. Okay, you catch your breath, you take all your time. You pile the kettle. <laughs> Morning, everybody. We're just after after arriving uh, at Carmen Horn. I know you know me, Sammy, and um, this is my husband Aid with me, and uh, we're in music ministry for years, and we have a prayer group in our home. But for over twenty years, I have suffered with very severe sweating. Very, you couldn't describe it. So that's why you always see me playing music in black. And between every session or after, why you tell me to push it as far? Am I right now? So, um, I, um, for over the 20 years, when I'd sing in our own prayer group in, in Banner for an hour in praise, I would have to go immediately down to the bathroom and change my clothes, and I would spend a lot of money on padding up for the sweat. I knew that sweat a lot knows what I'm talking about, but this was a different type of sweating. I had been in the Galway clinic and had been checked out and they couldn't find what the cause. I had gone everywhere. I had tried every herbal, every medical, you name it, I tried it uh, from trying everything. And in February of this year, uh, we got a text from a friend of ours telling us, you know, and strange we heard about, did you hear about the Indians in Cork? <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, uh, to be quite honest with you, we didn't go. And then, then this year, earlier, a friend of mine uh, texted me and said, uh, would you welcome Brother Johnson to your home? I said, of course we would. We do have different speakers. So um, Amal Francis trained under Brother Johnson, and uh, Amal is from India. So I said to my husband, I'm going down to just get prayer for myself because we were always given. And I said, I'm going to see what I shift this nuisance because you couldn't describe it. It's like when I go, some of you know, it'd be like I go out the shower when I sing. And um, so uh, we did. Amal prayed with us. And uh, he, he just, you know, very gently, very humbly uh, told me about, you know, the mind and forgiveness and all the rest of it that we all think we deal with in life, but we don't. We cover it up nicely, and we dress it up, and we put on the war paint and the lovely clothes, but we dress up all the pain. So, uh, you're not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I said, uh, um, I'm over 30 years in ministry, and as you all know, and I look at all the women here, all the men is not like us, but we cover ourselves up in war paint, in makeup, in hairstyle, in jewelry, in all the rest of it. Why? Because we want, well, it's a mask. We want to hide. What are we hiding? What are we hiding, you know? And uh, from the time, the first time I met um, Brother Johnson's man that trained under him, Amal, I felt very ch challenged. I was very cross with him, I have to tell you. And I challenged everything he said. I, I came back at him very heavy. And uh, he was using nothing, only the word of God. He answered me with the word of God. Every, thing, every question I came back, and what I liked most about him was he was very patient. He didn't just say, oh, go off now with yourself and buy Mrs., you know, do that and end of story. He stayed with me on the word of God. And then he started to send me what Brother Johnson, uh, the word of God from Brother Johnson. And he came and he gave us a little white book. A small little book, it's not bigger than a matchbox. And an MP3 to listen to Brother Johnson's talks. So uh, I started to read a little white book. And I'm sure if your house is like our house, is full of books. Are they all read? But this is the real book because this was the word of God. This was a difference, and there was pages in it that I'd gloss over, you know? We all do that. And, and, and for years, in my spirit, I've been playing music 
for sitting in front of the keyboard and you all know me from Clonfert and I often f broke my heart to know why the same people were coming every week for a prayer and not healed and we're back the next week with the same misery and not healed and I began to search my husband and I and that's where we are today saying why in all these charismatic centers and prayer groups we're going to adoration we're praying the rosary we're all good people we're going to confession we're going 10 rosaries a day we're doing five hours adoration blah 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 and we're not changed we're not changed does it ring a bell with you well it rang a bell in my head so I have to tell you uh, brother Johnson was talking down in Turles last week Turles it was Turles yeah yeah and uh, that week I was to go to every session he was at and I had two funerals that two people died and I would decide to go to the funeral and do the music for them which I felt well forget about yourself again so I went and did the funeral music for them and then there was a very sick woman who I went to bring a priest to her so I missed brother Johnson so I thought that's it won't get to him not meant to be there so on the Friday and we had a tough week we were fighting all the week and it was my husband's fault <laughs> no it was my fault <laughs> <laughs> seriously by the time I got to go to, to Turles Turles I didn't want to be there and when we went into the house um, Brother Johnson wasn't there Pat was there who I know was talking first and I was sitting there there's about 20 of us there and I thought what am I doing here you know and Brother Johnson started to talk uh, how easy are you offended when is the last time you were offended and then he talked about the little hole under your nose and what's inside it and how you bring on yourself your sickness sick soul sick body i'm not a suffering soul and it's rubbish and it's not my family tree that has me where i am it's rubbish it's me family tree is rubbish read your scripture because us Irish do not know it we pick a little line here which we did from Exodus for years uh, I will punish to the fourth generation but we never read the rest of it I will bless to the thousand generation and Ezekiel 18 12 which his trainer pointed out the same thing if the father commits sin I will not punish the son if he keeps the commandments if he breaks them he will bring the curse to himself so he began to talk about all of this and um, as he continued I knew and I am 30 years praying for giving I am one of 14 children thanks be to God for my mother and father above me my mother was a cop death and then there was two girls before me I was driving a Catholic home tough going so what but brought up a good Catholic but I didn't know and still I'm struggling to meet this God do you know him? You're cutting yourselves dressing up going to Mass every Sunday. Because we don't know him in there. And I never knew that when you pick up the word of God, this is the living word. This is Jesus who can heal you. But do you know it? Well, maybe you do. But I don't know the word of God. I don't know the lines he poured out. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. How many of us was wanted in our mother's womb? How many of our mothers cursed us before we were born? Not their fault, we're under pressure and all the rest of it. How many of us grew up like I did with a low self-image? And how many of us put on our glossy faces and we come in and pray and we go out and we see Mary cross the street who's in a prayer group and we take strips off of her and destroy her character. And that's us Catholics running to sun the mass. That's me, Carmel. But when I took on board what he said and he prayed with me, I went back over my life. And I am not padded today. Praise the Lord. I have no sweating. And you don't know what that's like for me, but my husband knows. My husband knows because in every session in our house, and we'd have 100 people, you have to run down. <laughs> and when I'm going to do music, which I do a lot of all over the place, I bring three bags of clothes to change the clothes. And for us women, you know how comfortable that is, uncomfortable in spots where you don't want to talk about. But you think of the woman that touched Jesus. What changed me? 
I started to write down what I was saying, what I was thinking. In half an hour, you'll shock yourself with the negativity that spews out of your mouth. You will be shocked. He said, choose life or death, blessing or curse. Every time we open our mouth, we spew out. And then, whew, thank you, God. And that's why we don't see miracles. We have, both of us, my husband and I, have seen many miracles over the years with our children in our family, where we prayed with people, where we prayed with our children. We have seen many miracles. But somehow the Lord wanted to clean up a heap of muck that was buried in here. And you can see me today. I'm after walking all around looking for ye. I couldn't find ye. <laughs> and I'm not sweating. <laughs> I am not sweating. Praise the Lord. And I want to just... You see, when you hear Brother Johnson first, the first thing I did was I became... Who does that fellow think he is, you know? <laughs> you <there? laughs> who does you know, who does this Mr. Noah come in and tell us Catholics in Ireland like how to pray? We're all praying for thousands of years and he's saying, Read the word of God, read the word of God, and you're going, Yes, yeah, we know that. But we don't know it in our hearts. We don't know the word of God. And you can go home and close your book. But he has a radio app, I have to tell you, and you can download it on your phone. And when you start to listen to his story of telling of a girl that was born deaf from birth, and when he prayed with her, she was instantly healed. But when she went home, her mother said, oh no, that was hip, 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 hypnosis. Yeah, Instantly, she went deaf. So the next brother brought her back to Brother Johnson next week and she repented for her lack of faith and she got her hearing back lack of faith has me satan has our minds in his pocket fill your mind he said in philippines four with everything that's pure holy noble and just what's your mind full of and you know last night he was talking about the hen and the chickens <laughs> it's going to bring you a hen <laughs> the hen and <laughs> okay the hen Don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have a clock and hen? See, they all have chickens. Well, when the hen has the eggs on the nest, I ain't going to take a chair, I'm not going to sit on the ground. <coughs> and what does she do? She sits on the eggs. Right. Did she keep getting up and looking at the eggs and saying there's no chicken? After the first day, she had this. After the fourth day, she had this. After the 15th day, she's still looking at eggs. After three weeks, she has a chicken. Did she keep looking at saying, where is, I no egg, what am I going to do? No. When we have a problem, what do we do? Non-stop. Or, oh, please, God, it'll be well. It's the biggest cop out. God, you fix it, and I won't deal with it. God, you fix it and I will run scot-free. What's the cause of your skin condition? What's the cause of this, that, and other? Proverbs 18, 21. We eat the fruit of our tongue. We eat the fruit of our tongue in our family. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life is in the power of the... So what are you choosing today? Life or death, when you go out of here, you're going to turn and say, did you see your one over there? Hmm. Did you see what he said? I wouldn't like that. You're spewing out diesel for Satan. And he injects me today with a little injection of jealousy. Look at her. Hmm. Who does she think she is? And that injection of jealousy starts to poison me inside. That injection of fear, of anxiety, of envy of rejection we'll leave it a little while and as, as he was talking about the the might steeds to timber i bought a piano lately and it looked lovely but it is full of woodworm but it looked lovely on the outside is your piano and your soul full of woodworm ask yourself because it's from the rot comes from inside not outside think about but I just want to praise God. You know, we, we were in, in Turles last night because my husband saw it. I'd spend 30 euro every week on pads. 
And that's a, just a simple week doing nothing. But I'm doing music. I was on diorlets. I was drinking at half pints of water just because I would be so tired from the sweating. Really tired. I'm free. Praise the Lord. Did you see the man with the steel hands? Did you see him? The man with the steel hands, he could move them when Brother Johnson prayed at him. And, and, and the teaching he gives you, Luke 10.19, have to tell you a funny story. He said, Luke 10.19, I, Jesus, have given you, Carmel, full authority. I have given you. It's not just the preacher here at the top, or the sister, or the priest, or the top charismatic preacher. No, he's given every one of you full authority to tread in serpents and scorpions and against all the powers of the enemy, so nothing will harm you. So what's wrong with us all? You all have a driver's license? You have a driver's license? Yeah? Well, this is higher than any driver's license. This is a full authority to tread on any spirit that's coming against you. And he said in Mark eleven twenty three, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, You'll s and you say to the mountain, be uprooted and go into the sea, and don't doubt it will be uprooted and happen. But he said, if you have any grudge against anybody, hmm, you, we have to live God's law. I was not living God's law. Thought I was. Blinkered. But go back to that, m that one, Luke 10, 19. I was with the dentist during the week. I was after listening to his headphones every night. And the dentist opened my mouth with a toothache in the bottom tooth, and I haven't had fillings for years. So the dentist looked at my mouth and said, Oh, Carmen, all them fillings are there too long. We'll have to take out them. I thought, Oh, for God's sake. So then I thought, huh, I'll try this now. <laughs> so I said, By the full authority given to me in Luke 10, 19, I'm speaking to your teeth. You are healed. There is no pain. There is no nothing. So then he said he was going to take two x rays. So he took the x rays, and the x rays disappeared in the cyber. So I waited half an hour, one while we were waiting, I kept saying, I have claimed my teeth are perfect. I claim my teeth are perfect. He came back, he did a second x-ray, and he said, look, I don't believe it. You don't need fillings at all. Your teeth are perfect. So that was just practicing. But, but it's no good thinking it. You have to say it. You ha listen to me. You have got to, this won't work, not unless you're going along in the car and you're saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has filled me with his love. Do you believe it? Well, how are you all sick so? How many here is not sick? How many is crippled with their bones and hopping around? Yeah. Ask yourself the question. We might be sick with physical, but how are we sick in our thinking? We look at the government. Oh, that man in the T-shirt. Oh, he's an awful thing. So what? He's, he, no, it's not true. He's created in the image and likeness of God. It is. And that's where, you see, you see where we're all going down? The swally. Put on the mind of every second. Because maybe you're all saints. But I can tell you one thing. Satan's job, 24 hours a day, is to get you and your family to hell. The word of God is the, is the gunfire to get rid of it. To go in and take out the loot that he's taken from your family, from your children, from your marriage. He's taken the joy from your heart. Why are you so depressed? Why are you not all these antidepressants? Why? What are you hiding behind? Why did you not deal it in your life? Get rid of it. Get rid of it today. <coughs> and the word of God, the more you read it. You see, us Catholics, Brother Johnson doesn't understand in Ireland, we'd go to Mass of Sunday, we'd hear the word of God. That's it next Sunday. Until we went to prayer groups and we'll read scripture. But how many of us know God in our heart through the word of God? Ask yourself, because I didn't. But I know now he loves me. I know now I'm free. I am totally free. I fell over a tree when I was a young one and came down on a stake and tore my legs and I wouldn't be able to stoop down or stoop up. Look. But you have to do your...
do you eat your food? Do you eat your dinner every day? Are you sure? You eat your dinner, you drink your tea, you drink your coffee, you eat your buns. Yeah, but you do. What about your soul? What do you feed your soul with? How long do you spend praying every day? A few minutes, an hour, but you're doing all the talking. Yeah, please God. Oh, you get better soon. Please God. Rubbish. Sickness is not from God. Sickness is not from God. Write that in your forehead. This is for the Irish. Sickness is not from God. Am I right, Brother Johnson? You tell them it. <laughs> Do you know when you were preaching, I said, God, if I can teach her, I don't need to come to Ireland. <laughs> because you are doing a better job because you understand your people better so you can tell them exactly what they need to hear. God bless you. Fantastic, isn't it? So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are raising her up and I'm going to watch her preach the gospel with authority, with demonstration of your power, Lord. And thousands and thousands giving their hearts to Jesus, your son. Lord, thank you for this anointing that is on her life, like a prophetess bringing the message of heaven with fire, like that of Elijah, and challenging the people with manifesting glory, backing her up, and confirming the word that she is preaching with accompanying signs and wonders. Thank you. And praise you, Lord. And thank you for the gift of singing, that through singing, she brings forth your glory of worship in the hearts of people, that they repent and give their hearts to you. Father, I pray for a powerful, powerful youth ministry, Lord. Let her become pregnant right now, like Mother Mary got pregnant with the word from Angel Gabriel. So this is the word from you, Almighty God, that millions of youth, their future is locked up in that womb. And Lord, let her not sleep. Let her have no rest, uncomfort, that she is pregnant to deliver these children and bring them into your kingdom. Thank you for bringing forth like-minded people in her life to become an army to serve you, O Lord. Father, thank you for this anointing in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, because, <laughs> hallelujah. Because this player was playing better than me. She scored better, better scores than me. Can we give the Lord one more time a big hand of praise? You know, when a person has gone through terrible time and experienced God's love and God's miracle, the person doesn't need to prepare. It's like a flood inside, waiting for the door to open and it just comes out. And when it comes out, it comes out because that person has gone through it. And that person is actually screaming and saying, Hey, listen to what I'm saying. You, you put faith in the doctor. You put faith in, the, in, in so many things. Why don't you give a try to God and see He will not fail you. Praise God. Praise God. <coughs> so, all that we heard, we want to give you in small points. So that those points will give you the whole paragraph. Okay? So write down two kinds of faith. The topic is two kinds of faith. Write down. There are two kinds of truth. There are two kinds of truth. 
that produce two kinds of faith there are two kinds of truth that produce two kinds of faith the first line you have to decide you have to decide from the beginning which truth you will allow to govern your life you have to decide which truth you will allow to govern your life the first kind of truth the first kind of truth is truth is truth that comes from god's word the first kind of truth is truth that comes from god's word john 17:17 the work of faith the work of faith is based on the truth on the truth of god's word faith is a practical expression faith is a practical expression of your confidence of your confidence in god and his word in god and his word no word no faith no word no faith next paragraph the second kind of truth the second kind of truth is sense knowledge truth the second kind of truth is sense knowledge truth or truth based on physical senses that that spelling physical is wrong okay one o is come between by mistake the second kind of truth is sense knowledge truth a truth based on your physical senses walking by your physical senses walking by your physical senses is based is based on sense knowledge truth is based on sense knowledge truth then finished okay okay no sense knowledge truth i'll i'll explain i'll explain give me chance give me a chance i'll explain and then i'll explain to you how this miracle takes place hello once you understand the application then we find healing taking place so quickly okay finish next one whatever you embrace whatever you embrace as your truth whatever you embrace as your truth determines or defines determines determines your destiny okay determines your destiny next 
you have to decide you have to decide which truth will govern your life not wife <laughs> life you have a choice you have a choice to either be governed you have a choice to either be governed by sense knowledge by sense knowledge truth or the truth of god's word or the truth of god's word last line what a relief <laughs> the decision to follow god's word the decision to follow god's word must be solidified must be solidified before the battle must be solidified before the battle done no hello done yes now just put the first line there are two kinds of truth that produce two kinds of faith now let's take a sister's example she cannot deny that she was not sweating every evidence in her body is showing that she is suffering from an extreme extreme sweat and because of which she was using the pad for 10 years 20 years and because she has been a regular customer the factory began to sponsor her absolutely free <laughs> was it costing yeah how much a week at least 30 euro for 20 years <laughs> so let me do the calculation and come back to you she did not follow <coughs> 30 euros <coughs> actually speaking it's not the euros but the kind of suffering okay so she cannot deny what she is going through it's a truth agreed so this truth which you can see feel touch smell and here is a sense knowledge truth that also produces faith can i take his example you won't get offended no supposing is sitting on this chair and we are all uh, uh, having the same chair and his chair breaks okay what will happen to others you will get conscious what about that brother si is sitting and his chair breaks what will be your thought now is my next 100% next because looking at his <laughs> and yours yeah. now that is called as sense knowledge faith yeah. you become conscious <coughs> because of what you saw so your corresponding action is done so in our life our senses are working all the time agreed but there's another truth which is not sense knowledge it is word knowledge truth and this is 
a knowledge that comes from the word of God and there is no evidence seen the only evidence is the word of God let me show you now what healed her ok on one side she's, she knows that she is sick on the other side just put the Bible 1 Peter 2.24 What was the scripture used for your healing? I say it. Do not be afraid of the danger. Okay. No, no. When you came that day, when we prayed. Yes, because I said. When you fed me. Mm. When you walked through the water, God. Okay, okay. Yeah. Isaiah 43. Yes, yes. Okay. I did not use this one. Because I don't remember. No, but the first time I went prepared for the special group, you were man, you trained. That uh, was the one. That was the one. Okay, yes. okay. Yes. So I'll use both, okay? Yes. So my brother Amal did the first job. He did. Yes. <laughs> so the conception took there, the delivery I did. <laughs> Praise God. We all work together. Praise God. Yes. I'm talking about spiritual pregnancy. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm talking about spiritual pregnancy. Yes. So that day when you got one. pregnant, yes. when he was sharing, yes. you were charging him again. Yes. But he was all the time showing you Please. the word. Yeah. So you were a champion in sense knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And you had also some knowledge which was not according to the word. Yes. So he had to break the stronghold. Yes. So every time you said something, he said, no, that's not a truth, that's a lie. So he said, how can it be a lie? Okay, see. Yes. Now, let me show you. How many of you believe God gives you victory in your life? Come on. God gives you victory in your life. Yes. Now, now all of you who lifted your hands up, that's a lie. <laughs> let me just, just put this aside and just come to 1 John 5, 4. Are you shocked? One John five four. Okay. No, it's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Listen, listen. Whatsoever is born of God. Now, are you born from your mother's womb or your father's womb? Mother's womb. So we were born from the mother's womb. That came a day, baptized, received Jesus as a Lord God and Savior. The Holy Ghost came upon us, and then we got born of. God. So now we are no longer born from the mother's womb. We are born from the father's womb of heaven. Okay. Then he says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. What? So who gives you victory over the world? So how can you say God gives me victory? God has given me spirit. He has given me his word. He has given me his authority. He has given me all those things. But I have to grow my faith. Has Jesus ever said, go in peace, I have healed you? Or what did he say? Your faith has healed you. So who gives you victory? Faith. But what is your understanding? God. So when your understanding is God and the victory is not coming, where are you pointing finger? But now you know your faith gives you victory. So now victory is not coming. So where are you searching for? Where am I getting, where is the faith leakage? So if I can find the leak and close the leak and fill the tank, now my faith can give me the victory. Are you following? Yes, we are. So my sense knowledge and word knowledge are so different. Yes. So now I have to think, should I believe this? And if I believe this, then I will run after faith. A decision has to be made. Let me give you another one. That same one, 1 Peter 2.24. 
1 Peter 2 24 Jesus his own self bore our sins I think my head is getting cut off in the camera Jesus his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes he is not saying are you you now now sense knowledge says she is sick word knowledge says on the cross when Jesus said it is finished that very moment he declared her healed now which one does she agree it took two months I agree Be because because it took how many years to build a fo yes. fortress in your head Come here, come here, please, please, please. The word is Beca because, because in the testimony, when a person is saying, I got healed, I'm never happy with that. I'm more interested in, what did you do? I'm interested in that. I'm interested in the recipe, not the cake. But, but you, If you can teach me the recipe, I tasted the cake, cake is good. But that doesn't help me. I want to go and make my own cake. So I need a recipe. Now did you see the secret was what? Two months it took her to change this word. You were healed. Because a mind is fighting with her that I am sick. Come on man, if I am healed, why should I wear the pads then? And, and if I am healed, why is it still sweating? But she kept on saying. How? Loudly or softly? Out loudly. And even when I began getting dressed, then I said... One more, one more, one more, one more. I don't want you to miss. Because please, please understand. Um, oh, we are not the only people here. There are people around the world watching this live. So there are people who are crying and saying, Hey sister, how did you change from your eyes that you could see and still say, I am healed so confident. How did the change take place? So we want to know that. Well, the first time I was prayed with, you know, I thought, this is great. And Amal, whom Brother Johnson trained, said, you go and walk and run. The sweating was gone. Instant miracle, okay? When I came home the next day, it was worse than ever. And I thought, oh, for God's sake. So I, I phoned him up and he said, you read out loud, you read this reading, read it, read it, read it. And I just kept, my husband will tell you, kept saying it over and over and over, out loud, wake up at night, say it out loud. So you became like a baby. Yeah. Ready to follow instructions. Following instructions. Write down in capital letters, whenever I need a miracle, I must follow instructions. instructions. From the word of God. From the word of God. When a person comes to God and says, God, give me a, I want a miracle. The first thing you say, follow my instruction. Yeah. And I didn't follow it up until then. And it was, no. I, I did not follow the instructions. I, when you see yourself, you're going dressed to go on stage to do music and the sweat is running off you. But I kept shouting out these words you know I have been healed I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus so my mind was like an empty cup full of the self so you have to fill that mind which is a container with the word of God by not just thinking it you know that's what I was doing first it's saying it over and over and over again and the more I said it it became alive. It became, and then, you know, the word of God is alive. It has the power to deliver, to separate. And the more, but the more you keep saying it, it's like, 
Did you ever start pushing a car and start stuffing and stuffing and then you push the car and it starts to go? It, that's what it's like. You get a power. A power coming through you and you know. You know it's the word of God. It has a power. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever did you ever push a car, did you? <laughs> well we did. But that's what it's like. It's pushing. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's what it was like when I was starting. God is capable of making me from this state to that state. Yeah. But until it starts, it's no use. No. And and the batteries are gone low. Yes. Push, push, but the word of God was the push. Yeah. Yes, yes, abs, abs, and and I can't tell you enough because you, if the more you keep shouting it out loud, shout it in the kitchen, put it up good and loud that you can hear, you can hear his talks, you can hear the word being prayed, and you'll notice a difference. You'll notice a difference. A big, the atmosphere has changed. You see. The atmosphere changes in your life, in your kitchen, in your workplace, when you're the word of God. You're saying it all the time, saying it, when you're walking along, saying it. And, you know, we, we don't know the word of God, but the few scriptures we're knowing now, they're alive. It's a living person. It's different. I can't tell you it's different, but it's different. It's alive, and I'm free. So you can see that. Now tell me, if somebody had to visit a kitchen or fix a camera and watch her, she's in the kitchen. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Yes. I'm healed. Yes. I'm healed. Yes. Oh, I'm healed. Yes. I'm healed. Yes. Yes. You are enjoying now. Yes, it's different. And and you are enjoying now with the style and seeing the same scriptures. Yes. Scriptures are not boring. They, because they are life. And when you start going and the confidence starts believing, coming up, the depression starts falling off. Yes. You become free for the first time. Then you are you and you are dancing with Jesus. Come on, Jesus! Yay! And you are no longer feeling alone. No loneliness. Nothing. You are enjoying. And sharper than a two-edged sword. Yay! <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus.